Hallelujah. Limitations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. A very familiar scripture that we should know, and when this is one of those scriptures you need to know by heart. The Bible says in verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Everybody say his compassion fails not. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that the Lord's mercy and compassion does not have a limit on it of how many times I can make a mistake before his mercy and his compassion runs out. I'm grateful it don't have an expiration date. Verse 23 says, they are new every morning. Everybody say, every morning, my mercy's new. And then it goes on to not just to stop that they're new every morning, but he said, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him you have a faithful God. I want to preach to you for the next few moments on this simple little thought. When the king has a heart towards you. When the king has a heart towards you. How many of you in this house today would really, really would love, amen, and I'm going to use this and I hope it's it's going to be a good <laughs> Some of you might throw something at me, but just let me use it this morning. How many of you here today would love for the president of our United States to have a heart after you that whatever you wanted and whatever you needed, all you had to do was pick the red phone up and he would send aid to you at whatever you needed. That we would have a personal invitation at any given time to go and just sit with him because he has the authority to change some things in our life. How many would love to have that relationship or have that opportunity? Well, I want to tell you about a man that's greater than the president. His name is Jesus Christ and he's the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. Amen. You may be seated. I have a word that I want to share with you today that someone in here today needs to hear that the king has a heart towards you. And the king has a heart that he refuses to allow anything to separate you from him. And whatever you're facing, whatever you are going through at this present moment, the king is wanting and desiring and he wants to be able to release some stuff and get some stuff out of your way. Now, I don't know about you, but there's some situations in my life that I need the king to write a check for. There's some circumstances in my health that I need the king, Dr. Jesus, to fix some stuff in my life. Come on, somebody. Amen. If, if you got all your, all, everything's okay in your life and you don't need anything, amen, you could just sit there. But I want somebody that has some needs in your life to realize that, Pastor, you're preaching to me this morning. That word's for me this morning. I, I needed to hear that the king has, has a heart after me. So I want to tell you today that God will never define you by your worst or your weakest moment. Just because we make a mistake in this great big old world that we live in does not define who you are in Christ. It is Christ who defines who you are in this world. It is not the world that defines you. It is the name of Jesus Christ. God does not consult your past to determine what your future is going to be. Aren't you grateful? Because every one of us here today, including the man with the mic, it has a past. We all have a past, and we try our very best to make sure that that door, that closet stays shut and locked. Do not enter. (laughs) Hello. But I want to tell you about a God that does not consult your past, amen, to determine what your future is going to be. He erases your past. He does not bring it up. Does anybody understand what erase means? We have our children that just went back to school on Thursday. And most of our parents that are here today, you spent many hours walking up and down the aisle, checking off the list. 
one of those things on the list was what we call eraser. Anybody had to buy had to buy any erasers this past week? All right. Aren't you grateful, Amen, that the teachers allow you to be able to 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 uh, to, to have an eraser and push the eraser on your list? You know what the eraser is for? It's to take care of the mistake you just made. And God Almighty who loves you with everything he's got, every time you have a mistake, he immediately gets the eraser and he erases it out as long as we ask God to forgive us. He will and he is faithful to forgive us. Amen. Not only does he erase our past, but he forgives us of our past. I don't know about you, but I've known a couple of people in my life, amen, that said that they forgave me. <laughs> Hello. But it don't take too much of stuff for that thing that they forgave me comes back up again. Well, remember when you, wait a minute, I thought you forgave me of that. Hallelujah. Maybe we need to, we do good with forgiving, but sometimes we need to work on our forgetter. So that you have a future of no regrets is the reason why God takes an eraser and he erases the past. He forgives you of your past. So God does not want the enemy to have anything hanging over your head. He does not want the enemy to be able to bring things out from underneath the blood. If you put it under the blood, friend, it's forevermore forgotten. The only one that can bring anything out of the blood is you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your tomorrow, listen to this statement I feel that God gave me. When your tomorrow releases you from your yesterday. When your tomorrow releases you from your yesterday. <laughs> what in the world are you trying to talk about up there, Pastor? I want to help you to understand that 12 o'clock a.m., midnight, it starts a brand new day. We keep thinking that we got to wait for the sun to rise and we see the, the dawn of a new day. My Bible tells me that it is it, 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 in the morning, joy is going to come in the morning. That weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The last time I checked, amen, our, a new day starts at 12 a.m. midnight. We think it starts at 6.30 or 6 o'clock a.m. And we wring our hands whenever we don't realize that God's already started a brand new day for you in your midnight moment. When the king has a heart for you, friend, he will speed up time for you. He will go beyond the means that you have to tend to whatever you may have need of. At 12 o'clock midnight, at 12 a.m., it's at midnight that starts a brand new day. And yesterday at 11 uh, 59, amen, nine, nine point seconds, when that clock now strikes 12 o'clock a.m., your yesterday is now gone. I want to help somebody here today because you've got to understand God does not want you to live in yesterday. And we're still living on, nine, on, on 1130 and 1150 and 1155 in the past mistakes of our life. And you never realize God has already transitioned you into a brand new beginning because God's already eradicated your yesterday. When your yesterday has to give way to your tomorrow. Whew. You see, it's at that moment of transition from 11.59 to 12 a.m. that your yesterday is now gone and the renewing mercies of God is now refreshed. Whew. I don't know about you, but I needed some refreshing of God's mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. I know the scripture says, how many times, Lord, do I need to forgive somebody? Is it just seven times? <laughs> Oh, Lord, boy, a bunch of us would be in trouble if that's what God stuck with. But he said, you don't forgive them just seven times, but seven times 70. And I don't think God said that so we can sit there and check off one more, one more time. <laughs> 
Brother Benny, you, you say one more, th one more time and, and, and it's on after that. And at 11.59, you got one more word, just one more time and that's it. <laughs> Come on now. And before you can get that last one out, the clock says 12 a.m. <sighs> now I got to start all over again. That's the way your God looks at you. Is that every day and every moment and every circumstance and every trial and every trip. Let me, start, let me slow this brain down. And every trial that you have to walk through, God says, just keep coming. Just keep coming. You almost made it. The clock is about to tick. And you, then when he reaches that 12 o'clock a.m., I got something new and fresh for you. Amen. You don't have to live in your yesterday's mistakes. Could it be that this is the reason why Paul and Silas begin to sing? When did they begin to sing? At midnight. You know what gave them the song? It's because they looked up at the clock that was up on the wall and they saw 12 o'clock a.m. And at the midnight hour, they begin to sing praises unto God. Why? Because they just really understood that the mercies of God just became renewed. All the things I've dealt with this whole entire day, everything just become new. Hallelujah, I'm ready for some things to become new. Amen. If God has washed you in his blood, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If God has washed you in his blood, then all he can see when he looks at you and I is the simple redemption blood of the lamb. You cannot see through the redemption blood. You can't see the problem. You can't see the past. You can't see the... God looks at us and says, I don't see no sin. But every day, Brother Danny, we look in the mirror, and every day, Sister Holly, we go back to that same old thing, and we judge our own self according to what our life used to be. And God's trying to tell us, that's not who you are anymore. I've eradicated that. When you walk to the front of the altar and you lift it up your hands and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Uh, the word of the Lord says he is faithful and just to forgive us. And God washes us when we go down to that watery tank. Amen. Buried in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If God has washed you in his blood and that redemption stream of blood that still washes away the red crimson stream uh, of blood that washes away the the, the, the stained blood of sin, amen, it still washes white as snow. God will hold, amen, a barrier up so that you and I cannot see the past. I wanted to have that in here today, but I didn't have a chance before the service. But I had some, some of those things that we had on our VBS day of the little um, backdrops that we had. And I wanted some of those things that sit up here behind me because God wants you to understand the only thing that he is interested in you looking at is what's ahead of you. I love what somebody said the other day that he said that's the reason why God put a rear view mirror this big in your car. But he gave a windshield that goes from side to side. Some of us need to get our view off of the rear view mirror and start looking at the broad perspective of what God's got for your future. The windshield's bigger than the rear mirror. We find in Isaiah 1 and 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I looked and found the research that whenever the priest would take two goats, one would be used for the scapegoat. The other would be killed and put upon, amen, the altar for the sacrifice. But the scapegoat, the priest, would now come and they would take the sins of the people and they would transition those sins onto the scapegoat. And the scapegoat would now be led out of, amen, the city. And the Bible po uh, points out that, that on the temple they would, uh, they would have a red scarlet thread that they would hang upon the door. And they said that as the, as the lamb would be led out of the city, that if the sins were forgiven of the people, that the scarlet red thread that hung up on the temple, the doorway of the temple, that that scarlet thread would turn white. 
Now, here's what you got to understand. The, the, in my research, I found out that the only way that they can get scarlet is that they had to dip it in a red dye. But the red dye had to be dipped twice to get the red scarlet color. So God is not interested in just saving you the first time. God will save you the second time. He's got enough of red crimson stream of blood, amen, to help you whatever mistake you've ever made. Because that red crimson stream of blood, it will still wash you white as snow. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful. They said that as soon as the goat reached into the wilderness where they would let the scapegoat go, amen, that immediately something supernatural and miraculous would transpire upon that red thread and it will turn white. I don't know who's here today that just needs somebody or needs the Lord to just wash something down inside of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your spirit that it will cleanse and put things back white as snow. What God is trying to tell us is that he will cleanse us back to the pure state, even more pure than the day that you were born. You see, we understand that we're born into sin. And we need to be born again. That's the whole reason. Listen, friend, as much as those little babies, we look down at them beautiful little blue eyes and we just coo and coddle. Amen. Just give it a little time. You're going to have to start spanking that little hand or that little honey because they're doing things they ain't supposed to be doing. Well, who taught it? Did you tell them to do that? Amen. Come on, somebody. You might go, anybody understand that there's some things that we have to go back to God for him to fix some stuff in us. Amen. God is wanting us to understand that he is the perfecter. He is the cleanser. He is the forgiver, the renewer of perfection. God created you and I in the image of who he is. And God is a is the perfection of of what humanity is supposed to be and look like. And God wants to renew us back to that place called perfection. There ain't none of us in here today, including myself, amen, that has ever reached that place called perfection. <laughs> Don't let this halo you see over my head this morning fool you. You see them wings back there? <laughs> Hello. We understand we all need the help and the grace of God because none of us has not yet reached our eternal home yet. And as long as we are still walking this road called life, we still need the help and the strength of our Lord to help us every day. No human means will ever be able to wash out the sin stains out of our life. There's no effort of man. There's no matter of tears. There's no matter of sacrifice. It does not matter how many good works we do. It is only through the red crimson stream of blood that can wash away our sins. Oh, nothing can wash away our sins but the blood of the Lamb. Only then uh, they will be as white as snow. That is the deep fixed stains which no human power could remove. It is only taken away only through the precious blood that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed for you and I. In other words, sin shall be pardoned whenever God gets involved in our life and we allow God to have those secret things that we hold on to. And the soul is made pure when we finally allow Christ to come in. The Bible says that all the ages God has once and for all died on the cross for all humanity. You see, friend, when God hung on the cross, he already eradicated the sin in your life for today. Amen. It is not something that was lived for just the Bible days, but it was for this moment that you and I are living in today. This is the only way the scripture can be fulfilled in 1 Peter 1 and 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. The only way that we can fulfill that scripture, my, my friends, is that we have got to allow the red crimson stream of blood to be fulfilled and activated and flowing in our lives. When you look at me, you can see the scars. You can see the problems. You can see all the past mistakes that I've done. And that's the tragedy of maybe us operating in the flesh. 
and sometimes we just remember way too much. But when we look through the eyes of a loving Savior, we see that there is no scar. There is no blemish. There is nothing that's unpure and undone or unfixed. He is a perfect God, and he does perfect work. This is the only way that you and I can understand that we can live up to that scripture in 1 Peter is that we have to allow the great crimson stream of blood to flow and be activated in us. It is the only way that we can measure up to the perfection of Jesus Christ is Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. The God who is rich in mercy will come in, into a repentant heart at any place at any time whenever that person decides to say, God, here I am. I ran across this saying, it says, God's grace is greater than anybody's disgrace. God's grace is sufficient and his mercy is everlasting. And God's grace is greater than any disgrace that we've ever had in our life. God doesn't write you off. He writes you in. He invites you in. He doesn't look at, at, at you and say, you have a stain that my blood cannot remove. <laughs> we ought to forget the writings that Paul said and when Paul wrote in the scripture just for you and I. He wrote this just for you and I. Listen to what Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 says. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and what we're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Where is it at? Where does it work in? The Bible says the power that works in us. Where is the power at? It's in us. You have to understand God put something in you. But what our problem is is that we allow too much of our troubles and too much of our trials to forget what God said prior to Ephesians. You got to flip back a couple of places and a couple of books and get back into Acts 1 and 8 where he says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You have to understand you have something inside of you that's going to be able to get you through whatever you're going through. This did not come to stay, it just came to pass. You just got to keep walking. Don't stay there, don't live there. Don't build a house and stay in your dilemma. My God, get out of it. Hallelujah, it's a far greater work. God did not bring that in your life to destroy you. He brought that to lead you somewhere. Sometimes there are some things in my personal life, brothers and sisters, that I'm very grateful that God brought some trouble in my life because I got sick and tired of going through the trouble. I had to get out of there. Amen, hallelujah. I hope I'm helping someone. When the king has a heart for you, he will go to the extremes, amen, to help you. Hallelujah. I'll say it again where the word of the Lord says that God is rich in mercy and you can't make enough withdrawals from him to cause him to have an overdraft in his bank account of mercy. You'll never be able to go to the ATM in God's mercy account and get an NSF charge. Can I get you to understand that God said I'm rich in mercy? Come to the music, please. Can I just get you to understand, brothers and sisters, whatever you've been mentally fighting, what you have been physically fighting, what you have been fighting emotionally, God has a mercy that will cover it. God has the ability to eradicate it. God has the power and the authority to, to dismiss it. I hope you can understand what the Spirit is wanting us to say this morning. I had no clue I was going to preach this today. But I come to tell somebody here today, God has a heart after you. And if he has a heart after you, he's going to pursue you all the days of your life. He's not going to let you stay there. Sister Jenny, he's not that kind of God. Because he sees something in you. And he's got something that he put in you a long time ago. You know what the scripture says in, for Jeremiah? Jeremiah, he points out, he said, before I formed you, I knew you. That's right. Sister Jenny, you already have the handprint of God on your life before you was even born. 
before you even drew your first breath, God says, I got a plan for your life. But the plan of life, because of life, sometimes the plan of God gets altered. I come to tell you today that God has a plan for you so that you can get back on, that, on the plan that God has for you. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24, as we stand. To him be the glory in the church of Christ Jesus. Verse 21 of, the, of Ephesians, it says, To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever amen his mercies are not just for your grandpa and your grandmother it wasn't just for the 17th century the 18th century it wasn't just for the 19th century but it's also here today god's mercy is still available in first thessalonians 5 and 24 it says this faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. I don't know what you came in here burdened, heavy hearted with, but God says, whatever you need him to do, I'll do it. How can he make such a bold statement, friend, when you, when you are connected to the King of Kings, the one who created all things and has all power in heaven and earth. Trust me, he can do whatever he needs to do to get you to where you want him to be. Where are you going is greater than where you've been. Where you're going is greater than where you've been. Get your eye off of that rear view mirror and look at that big old windshield that's standing you in your, staring you in your face and see where God's wanting you to go. I got a brother Tenny a little cliche this morning for you. He said, you're better off in a rough place in a rough place with God's will than in an easy place without it. You're better off in a rough place with God's will being performed in your life than you are in an easy place without the will of God in your life. Going through trials is, is not a season, but it's seasoning. And God is combining some ingredients in your life to have a certain flavor. <laughs> I like that one. So what you're going through right now was never sent for your destruction. But so that his glory can be manifested in your life. Hear the word of the Lord. The king has a heart after you. I look at my dear friend, Brother Mitch, back there that's been walking through a very rough and difficult time. I'm not here to, 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 to belittle that, and I didn't ask for his permission, and he's going to have to forgive me. But I'm going to tell you something. That man has walked in places where he has seen God's hand guide him through some things. I hope it's okay, Brother Mitch, but Brother Mitch has already went through 400 and something uh, procedures or or. or, 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 or treatments that's what it was 400 something treatments on his body but you know what he said in my office this morning and told me I still trust in him I still trust in him his body is going through a lot of trials a lot of struggles right now but I come to tell you brother Mitch God's not done amen I can tell you that because of his mercy and his grace it don't matter what you're facing in life. My God still is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond. The question is here today, brothers and sisters, amen, is that do we still have the want to? Because the power of your worship can set you free. It changes the perspective of some things. And sometimes whenever you are you wake up every morning and you keep looking at the same old wall. 
You're looking at the same old circumstances. You're feeling the same old sickness and all the, won't you just change the view for a little while? Instead of looking at that, why don't you just lift up your eyes and look into the hill from which cometh your help? For the help cometh from the Lord. Why don't you just start getting your view upon Jesus Christ for a little while and say all this other stuff, I'm tired of looking at you. Mountain, it's time for you to get out of my way. Circumstances, it's time for you to change. Uh, heaviness, you've got to go. Weariness, you've got to go. Dark in the clouds, you've got to go. Hallelujah. I come to tell you, the king has a heart after you. Whew. And if the king has a heart after you, Brother Jerry, there ain't nothing in this world. There ain't nobody in this world that can get in the way when the king has made a decree. When the king puts his seal of approval upon it. Some of us need to have the seal of promise. And he's already gave you the seal of promise. It's already written in his word. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. So today, I don't know what you're facing, sir, ma'am. Amen. I don't know if it's young or middle age or young married. I don't know if you're struggling in your marriage. You're struggling in your health. You're struggling in your finances. I have no clue. God did not show me that. But I can tell you, I was not coming here today to preach this word. I was going to preach to you about, amen, it was time to build an ark again for our families. So I don't know who you are, sir, ma'am, here today, but I'll come to tell you, God's got an answer. God has a door and his hand's on the door and he's ready to open a brand new door for you. He's ready for you to understand, I've got a way of escape. The enemy thinks he's got you boxed in. The enemy thinks he's got you locked up somewhere. But I see the hand of the Lord beginning to open up a brand new door for you. He said, out of every wave, out of every temptation, I'll make a wave escape for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, I don't know who you are. And not that you got a, a problem or sin in your life. That has got nothing to do with it. Sometimes we just need God to just let us know everything's going to be okay. Sometimes we just need to come and lift up our hands and just let God begin to fill us up again. Hallelujah. So if that's who you are today, I want to invite you. Matter of fact, why don't we come down? This is family month. Why don't we come down as a family this morning? Amen. And before we leave from the auditorium this morning, why don't we just spend some time talking with the Lord? Why don't you just let God begin to have those burdens? Why don't you take it out of your hands and put it in the hands of a capable God? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let Jesus begin to have what you've been carrying. The heaviness, the problems, the situations that's beyond your care. Your doctor can't fix you, but God can. Your counselor can't counsel you, but God can. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're needing today. I don't know the circumstances you're facing today. You might need some deliverance. Come on down. Amen. Push your way on into the I altar work. Area. Come on. God wants to do something here today. The king has a heart for you. And if the king has a heart for you, he's going to do some things for you. Amen. Why don't we just begin to pray right now? In Jesus' name. Before we leave from the building, let's begin to entertain the presence of the Lord. Here.